Here we go again. This time we're using reds as they might appear in landscapes. And we have two bright reds on the left hand side of the page that we're looking at. And we're mixing them with oxide or earth colors on the right hand side of the page. The point here is that if you use the earth colors by themselves, you tend to get color mixtures which may be a little bit dull. And if you kind of rev them up by incorporating some of the bright colors into the earth colors, you get the intermixtures that you might not actually think of out of your own head, especially if you're new to color mixing. But if you go along with this project and you carry out the exercises, you will end up knowing how to introduce a bright color into a mixture with a duller color and get the result that you're looking for. So I'm starting to put out quinacridone magenta and naphthol red light. And on the other side, you have white. And I'm simply making tints of those two colors. The quinacridone is very dark in mass tone. It makes extremely bright pink tints, which are a little bit like thalo green. You're not going to encounter them in a landscape, but they can be very useful colors once you start mixing them with a burnt sienna or one of the other colors we'll see later on as we go down the page. Here we're going with the naphthol red light. You'll get similar effects with pyrrole red or cadmium scarlet. You'll get warm pink colors. We're looking at a page of color mixtures which are basically warm colors, most of them, which could possibly be used in landscapes. And they're based on the two colors you see in the top row of uh, layout, but we're going to mix them with, with warm colors. So we end up with warm mixtures to see the kinds of colors that you might end up with if you're painting a landscape. Here we go again, quinacridone and burnt sienna. Again in mastone, it's very dark. As soon as you add white to it, you see it goes off to very bright pinks, which are actually on the cool side of the color register. We add a little white to it and you get a color that might happen in a landscape. It's still rather pinkish, isn't it? Now it's getting down, it's getting more brown looking. That's more likely color that you might end up with. And so is this where the, the brown of the burnt sienna is uh, predominating, but the quinacridone is kind of pepping up the duller brown color. And these are, again, colors that you might easily use in a landscape, particularly as you get towards the right-hand side where the, the brownishness of the burnt sienna is predominating. But I hope you can see that uh, the, the earth color, in this case, burnt sienna, might be a little bit dull by itself, but by incorporating a little bit of the bright color with it, you end up with something that is has a little bit more pep to it. Uh, we're still going. We're going now down to the naphthol red light, and we're putting some burnt sienna into that. You get a very rich brown red. And go again, a little bit more of the brownishness of the burnt sienna. And this often happens with the landscape painting. If you're starting off with soft, rather dullish colors, you might need to come back and pep them up a little bit by mixing some bright color into the duller color. Thank you for watching. There are other videos in this series. I, I hope that it will be useful to you to have an inventory on your wall of color mixtures that you can return to and through practice, you will learn to do things instinctively.